In this lesson, let's talk about hexagonal architecture, what it is, why you should know about it, and when you should consider using it. It's a software architecture pattern that was invented by Alistair Cockburn, who is one of the signatories of the Agile Manifesto, which started the whole Agile development movement. But of course, most Scrum Masters have no idea what the Agile Manifesto is, because this scrum-infested thing that we know as Agile today is nothing like the Agile software development that these guys envisioned. But that's a rant for another day. Hexagonal architecture is an architectural pattern for creating loosely coupled application components that can easily slot into different execution environments via these abstraction layers known as ports and adapters, which is why Hexagonal architectures are often referred to as ports and adapters architectures, and is often drawn in a diagram like this, where you have your core domain logic encapsulated into its own modules and objects, and is hosted inside your application layer, which exposes a number of ports, which can be connected to adapters, which are then able to connect a client application to your application layer, and that client could be a Lambda function, and the adapter can transform the Lambda invocation event into the right shape that the input port demands, so data can flow into your application layer and pass along to the core domain. But you can also have other adapters for the same input port, so that other clients are able to connect to the same application. For instance, you can have an adapter for an ExpressJS app running in a Fargate container, so the application can run in Lambda as well as Fargate by just switching the adapter that you use. Which is pretty powerful, right? It gives you portability that can be very useful in those rare cases where you are not sure if a workload should be running in Lambda or in a container. Or just to win an argument about vendor locking so that you can run your workload in Lambda with the possibility of later migrating to containers without having to do too much work. And just as you can create ports and adapters for imports, you can equally have ports for exports and adapters that can connect these exports to the target destinations, such as adapters that takes your output from the domain and writes them to DynamoDB or to a mock so that you can run behavior validation logic in your test or to RDS if you decide to switch databases from NoSQL to Relational or to some third-party service like PlanetScale because you like it better than RDS. So as you can see, this is a very powerful way of structuring application to allow for a lot of flexibilities. And it also helps with making your application more testable as well, because it creates clear abstraction boundaries where you can use unit tests to test your application and core domain and use adapters that connect the application to mocks and stubs. And then write integration tests for individual adapters to make sure you don't have any, say, errors in your DynamoDB query syntax. Which is great, but there's still the question of why a hexagon? Why not a triangle or square or any other polygon? Well, maybe because hexagons are the best agons, and uh, why beehives and graphene are all hexagons, maybe? But that all sounds amazing, right? Almost too good to be true. Surely there's a catch. Well, for me, the main drawback is that having all these abstractions adds a lot of work. There's the upfront investment to put them in place, but it also adds friction to change as well. Say you make some changes to the core domain and change some of the domain types, and chances are those changes will need to propagate out to all the ports and to the adapters as well. And where you do need that flexibility and portability in your application, then I think this is a small price to pay. But most applications that I've worked on don't need that portability to switch between Lambda and containers easily or to be able to swap out a database. And also, changing a database is going to take a lot more work than just swapping out the adapter layer, in most cases anyway. So 
it's important to consider the return on investment before you decide to go the whole nine yard and adding all these abstractions to your application, which is great when you're dealing with a complex domain or if your project has a lot of uncertainty and risk, in which case, then absolutely, these abstractions would give you some peace of mind and the flexibility to pivot later if and when you need to. For most of my projects, I haven't needed that. And what I do is closer to this, where I still encapsulate away the core domain logic, but the conversions are done inside the Lambda handler directly without introducing adapters and ports. And where I need to interface with external systems, I don't go through ports and adapters neither. But even with this light layer of abstractions, I can still write my unit tests and integration tests. And for really simple functions, I might not even have a domain layer because the functions are really just that simple, makes a call to DynamDB and returns the data without any modification. In fact, a lot of your functions might also look like this. And so having a Lambda function just to make a simple API call to DynamDB is kind of wasteful. And that's why the whole functionless approach has been getting a lot of traction recently. Because services like API Gateway, AppSync, and the step functions can often do these simple AWS SDK calls for you directly without needing a Lambda function. But I digress. If the function is really that simple, and I don't have a domain layer altogether, then often I will skip the unit tests altogether and just have integration and end to end tests in the project. And in the next lesson, let me show you what an integration test for a simple function like this might look like, and if you should use mocks or local simulators or the real thing, and when's the best time to use each of these. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson.